Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today it's all about the Cuban sandwich. And between me and you, it is my wife's favorite sandwich. So let's see what we can do. Let's go. Just a quick preview real quick. As always, you're preheating on low, getting up there about 350. I'm gonna let it keep going and going and going. So uh, one of my uh, subscribers who comments pretty regularly, I asked his opinion. I said, any suggestions you want me to make? He said a Cuban. And I thought, ironically, I have pork tenderloin in the refrigerator. I asked Mike and I said, Mike, the guy I was talking about, the subscriber, and I said, uh, you know, my, my biggest thing is bread. You know, what kind of substitutions are there? So I started looking online back and forth. And then somebody had comment deep in the thread that he got some Cuban bread from Publix. We have Publix in East Tennessee. And I thought, I'm going there immediately. And sure enough, I'll stand in the line and I swear my I was just grinning ear to ear. Oh, just so you don't think I'm lying, I don't make my own packaging. Cuban bread. I don't know how Cuban it is. So I finally found my Cuban bread and let's go over the ingredients. All right, got some mojo. This is just two pork tenderloins that I've trimmed the silver skin off of. It's been marinating for about two and a half hours. What I've done, you can see right here that there's slits in the pork. So basically what I did is once the pork tenderloin was out, I just cut it in uh, cross sections and allow that marinade to steep through it. You can see I kept some of the fat because I love the fat. Also- is that, is that called cross hatch? Could be, or just, you know, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, cross hatch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. Uh, all right, I bought myself some Saison. A lot of people have been recommending it. Um, although this is the tropical version, um, it seemed like it fit well because this has grapefruit and orange and stuff like that in there. And it just seems like a perfect uh, company to go with this pork. All right, got some Swiss cheese, pickles, mayonnaise, mustard. I actually like Dijon mustard way better than yellow mustard. So that's what we're gonna put on it along with this. And some good old Black Forest ham. Should be a pretty easy one. You ready? Yep. Cool. All right, since this is a sandwich for one, it's a good 24 inch sandwich. That's probably about one portion. We're going to just kind of even out the sides. Now, the thing about a Cuban bread, what I've learned, is it's got a crunch on the outside, but it's got a soft texture. This is almost like a hoagie soft, but the outside's really crunchy. So I'm just going to split it. Uh, let's make it even. Right down the middle. How do I do? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and butter the tops. Why do you think that you like the Cuban so much? I know that when we first started oh. dating, we went to the 7-Eleven and it was like... In Florida, we would go to Florida on vacation. Every time we went to Florida, I would have to go to 7-Eleven and get a Cuban sandwich. So that's what I'm competing with. I have no... 7-Eleven. So I don't know if I've got high standards or or what, but that's that's what we're trying to take her down memory lane right here. Oh, this is gonna be way better than 7-Eleven, honey. I don't know, we'll see. All right, now that we're ready to put a pork down, you guys can see I've just waited a couple minutes. Now we're starting to wisp some smoke. That means our sm our oil has come up to a smoke point, which is exactly what we want. That's one of those telltale signs about we're talking about flat top grill temperatures. Just gonna get a good dry rub on there right there. All right, now let me put the season side down. Go and season the other side. And all we're doing today is basically going to uh, flip often. We're looking for color and we're shooting about, we're going to shoot the temperature about 145 to 148 on the inside of the pork. I'm going to show you real quick. All I've been doing is just rotating, look how much darker we're getting. That's that marinade, caramelizing. See how much better that looks? Oh, it smells so good. It does. 
but all we're doing is just keep rotating the pork, finding new hot spots. Here, how hot that is right there. That's a good spot. Allowing this side to build back up and just rotating the pork back and forth and utilizing basically the whole space to get that hot spot. And all we're shooting for is internal temperature about 145. So I got a good ways to go. All right, this little guy right here is done already. I'm gonna pull him off, let him rest. Remember, we're making a sandwich out of it. So I'm gonna let this rest a good amount of time. We still got about five more minutes on this one. I just went and cut the knuckle off. That's the end piece of the port just because I could tell that it was taking a long time. So that's gonna to continue to cook. Once these are done, we're just gonna take them off, let them cool down. Then we'll get back to, we'll start video and uh, once we start slicing. All right, everything's cooled down. We ended up getting some nice color. You guys see that char? I'm sure that's a combination of that lemon juice and grapefruit juice, I mean, orange juice and grapefruit juice. That's perfect. So my idea is super thin slices, okay? So I don't necessarily want it shaved, but I don't want, not, I don't want thick chunks either. Show you guys what that looks like. See that? See all those cuts in there? All that marinade's penetrated through there for like max flavor. So I'm gonna get this cut up and then let's build the sandwich and we're almost done. All right, let's build this sucker. I'm gonna build two of them. Obviously I'll do one on camera. I'll do the other one off of camera. But while we were talking, it was a really cool idea that my wife came up with. She goes, you know, you're kind of making this food, more food from different regions it'd be neat to come out with a playlist that was called like regional favorites. I thought, wow, what a great idea. So we started talking about the items that we already have. We have the green chili cheeseburger. We have the pork barbecue cheeseburger. We have- um, Oklahoma onion burger. Oklahoma onion burger. The Harlem chopped cheese. And now we got a Cuban. So it'd be interesting to see what you guys think, where you're from and what kind of Oh man, I know there's a pork tenderloin sandwich out there somewhere uh, that's been smashed and fried with just pickle and a bun. But I'm just curious, where are you from and what's your all-time classic that we can make to put in the regional favorites? All right, I'm a fan of mayonnaise, so I don't know what the traditional ratio is, but if it's anything like an East Tennessee boy, we're putting it on there. I like my two types of mustard. So I'm going to put my two types on there. All right. Pork. I do not like mustard and cheese together. That's just a, a thing of mine. Don't kill me. So I'm going to wait to put the cheese on top. And my meat to bread ratio is probably a little off. I doubt the 7-Eleven put this much pork on there. Nope. <laughs> but that's pretty good, don't you think? Uh -huh. All right, come back in with some good ham. All right, so there's that. I think my wife got the biggest, fattest, thickest pickle <laughs> they made. So I'll make sure. I like I... those. Hey, right, it's all about you, boo. All right, pickle. And then the Swiss. Mm, that looks good, honey. All right. What do you guys think? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Breakage. All right, here we go. I'm going to flip it over this side first. Okay. And then take some butter. Get this side. Mmm. Now, I've, I've changed my mind while my pork was cooking. I didn't tell you guys. I'm going to wait and squish it until I flip it with a cast iron pan because I was thinking all that butter is going to be on a cast iron pan and I don't think it's going to do much to it. So right now, I'm just going to make the other sandwich. Let it cook for a minute, then we're going to flip it. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. Mm. 
If you don't have a cast iron pan like this, you can definitely do a sheet tray, put it over top and add, you know, like canned goods, like a pot, like a heavy pot, like a Dutch oven. You can even use the Dutch oven. You can use a sheet tray for like more coverage, anything, anything heavy. You can wrap a brick up in aluminum foil. All right, so let's check this one out. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right guys, so I just got the other one off. Woo! Put that one on. I don't know. We're about to find out though. They look good. Should I be the one that does the taste test? I don't know. Are you gonna do the taste? You gonna be filming? You do the taste test? You want me to? Why not? You ready? <laughs> So now you get to see what it tastes like. <laughs> yep. Now, if anybody knows her for real knows that she can take a <laughs> way bigger bite than that. <laughs> <laughs> On camera for the world to see right there. I love them. You got less than a minute. Less than a minute. Wrap it up. One bite, that's it's all good. it takes. It's good. No, we got to do another bite. It's good. It's what good. do you like about it? The what crunch, you can hear the crunch from a mile away. Mm -hmm. The meat is perfectly cooked. <laughs> Perfect amount of mayonnaise and mustard. I, it's, it's really good. I haven't had one from 7-Eleven in like 15 years, so <laughs> I don't think I could compare the two. All right, sign it off for me. Oh, good. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button pound the notification button as our nine-year-old daughter says and share it with your friends and we'll see you next time